TikTok is going. I know this is weird. I'm in my garage in my car with the car turned off and the garage door down. This is weird lighting. It's fine. I'm, I just, I have to come on here. I have to talk to you. And everybody's inside. It's chaotic. Um, I don't want to open the garage door because then the lighting comes in from the back. So I'm going to just sit here and talk to you and tell you about the worst two days of my life that have just happened over the last 48 hours. And I have a sponsored video I have to get out by the end of the month for Helix. And I was like, I will absolutely not attach helix to this video because i just i will not sponsor this video that's just crazy and i want to i have i can't we're gonna take a second i gotta take a second it's heavy i don't think i've fully processed it yet okay so <clears throat> if you don't follow me on instagram or even facebook you probably have no you you don't have a clue on what has been going on it's the kids spring break it's ella's spring break break. It's Ella's spring break. She's home this week. And on Tuesday, I don't know what day it was, Tuesday evening or Tuesday middle of the night, my mom called and said she got a hold of John and was like, hey, I'm taking your dad to the hospital. He's in agony, miserable, pain, awful, like level 5,000. My dad is not like a pain guy. My dad, I've never seen my father in a hospital bed in my life. I've, he's never just gone to the ER for like, I mean, he's chopped a couple fingertips off and he's like gone to like get that cauterized or something, but he's never been there for like being sick or hurt. So when John wakes me up at 4 a.m., I'm like, <gasps> and within two hours, we get, I get a call from my mom again. They're like, okay, so they're finally trying to get the pain under control. He's on all this pain medication. It's awful. You can hear him moaning in the background. I mean, it was terrible, terrible. Uh, she's like, they found something on his kidneys. That doesn't sound like something I would ever, I, when she said that, I was like, what do you mean? What does that even mean? What do you mean you found, they found something on his kidney? What does that mean? And because we're in the times that we're in, the hospital is insane and overloaded, especially this hospital. I will not go into that. Maybe I will, I don't know. There's so much. It's just like, she said there's something on his right kidney. Um, they are saying cancer. What do you mean they're saying cancer? What does that even, how can they say it's cancer? They just did imaging. He's got stomach pain. What do you mean cancer? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. There's a, what do you mean there's a tumor? I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. I did not fully comprehend. So I went to the hospital the next morning. They ended up admitting him. They think he may have, uh, long story short, my dad ate a papaya. He just had a colonoscopy a week ago. That was really good and everything was fine there. He is regularly getting colonoscopies. They, my parents, I'm so thankful for their guidance in life. They get skin checks, they get colonoscopies. My mom gets a mammogram every year. Like they have always been up to date on that kind of stuff to stay ahead of things and try and prevent things from happening or like catching things early or whatever. They've been like that my entire life. So I have never been prepared for this phone call. I, I was in shock. It was absolutely awful. They admitted him and they were like, okay, he ate a whole papaya a week after his colonoscopy and his stomach, we don't know if they're correlated, but his stomach freaked out and it was horrible for him. And now they think that he may have Crohn's. Okay, we can, de we can deal. Crohn's we can manage, that's fine. Um, but what happened when they were doing all the imaging for this whole stomach situation, they started finding spots on his kidney and on his pancreas. And that's when shit gets real, and that's when shit got terrifying, and that's when it was like, what the fuck is going on? I don't like this. And I'm sorry if you don't like when I cuss, but like, I do not know how to process this. I'm not sad, I'm happy, because good news, guys, he does not, we don't think, I don't know, he, do, he doesn't. He doesn't have cancer. So basically, he was admitted, and they found all of these things, little things on, not all of these, but like one on his kidney and a couple on his pancreas. And they did more imaging, and we waited like the longest wait of my entire life for these imaging results to like kind of try and confirm if it was the big C or if it was like cysts or hemorrhaging cysts or something or something that's not that. And it took forever, but we finally got the results back last night at the end of the day. And 
the doctor is very, very, very confident that it's not cancer. And when I tell you I have never felt a sense of relief in my life quite like that. So I've been living in this weird 48 hour fog of my, my dad is sick and he's in a hospital and it was emergent and spots and cancer and all I know from cancer is my personal experience. We lost my grandfather to cancer 15 years ago at my father's age. He was my father's age when he passed. And we lost John's uncle four years ago to cancer. People I love, when I hear cancer, I think of the worst thing ever. And it was awful. It was the worst 48 hours of my entire life. <laughs> He's fine now. Oh my God, it was so terrible. <laughs> It's also why I wanted to come in the car because I didn't want the kids to see me cry. And I'm not sad now. Like, I'm happy. I'm so relieved. He still has to, like, woo, woo, woo. Oh, oh, oh. I gotta get this shit together. Um, ugh, okay. Because I don't want my dad to watch this and, like, see me crying because he'll feel bad. Like, it's his fault. It's not his fault. Uh, but I was like a wreck. It was terrible. It was really, really bad. It was just so scary. <sighs> and I have never prayed so much in my entire life for good news. <sighs> so that's what's been going on. Uh, and he still has to get like way more testing. We I called yesterday. I made an appointment with his urologist. Um, we made another appointment with his the doctor who had just did his uh, colonoscopy, his GI doctor, to follow up on the Crohn's thing. I don't know. They say Crohn's can pop up like either when you're young or even at his age. He's 66. Um, he still works. Like he travels. He was just in California. Like my dad's a beast. He's like, he's superhuman. <sighs> So, yeah, my house burning down. Pfft, who gives a fuck? Not me. I don't care. This was the worst 48 hours of my life. Of my life. Not knowing. It's that hurry up and wait. They said that to us like 5,000 times in the hospital. And I, I swear to you, I could have climbed the walls if I heard hurry up and wait one more time. And I'm so thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful. An amazing nurse is the emergency department at this hospital is incredible. They were so wonderful. The doctor was amazing. The hospitalists, surgeons, every, <coughs> every bedside person I met. Uh, wonderful. The healthcare system is just completely fucked. Um, but every bedside person I met was wonderful. And I was just talking about becoming... Or like in my last video talking about like I'm feeling called to do something, um, be somewhere and help people. And I've been toying with nursing school. Um, I don't really want to be a nurse. So <laughs> like I really don't want to be a nurse. Like I don't want to be in the trenches. Sorry if it's like all blurry, but I don't want to be in the trenches. I don't want to live this life in this healthcare system. Like I don't. I want to be in obesity medicine. Um, I've had really great suggestions from you guys talking about life coaching and uh, maybe being a trainer or a dietitian for those with special needs, which I love that idea. I'm kind of shaping that into what I want to do moving forward. I blow my nose. There's so much snot. I'm sorry this is all over the place, but it's like I told my mom, like, I have to tell people on YouTube because I can't even. Like, I'm so thankful. And I was just. I need just something to blow my nose. You guys stand by. <laughs> Our laundry room is right there, so I grabbed a washcloth. That's gross. Oh well. It's my washcloth. That's uh, what was going on. So he still has follow-up doctor's appointments, but overall he's feeling so much better. Actually, when things started to move, like once they got his pain under control, because that was a whole thing in itself, and things were moving, he started to feel better. The kidney thing, literally, this was a whole entire God thing. God was like, okay, I'm going to make you eat a one pound or maybe even a five pound papaya. Trigger something so that you can get this test and be like, hey, we see something. And I swear to you, God always shows up in the weirdest ways for things like that. And I'm like so thankful. And I'm so thankful that they're so, they're so confident that it's 
more than likely, I think it's called a hemorrhaging cyst on his kidney um, and a like some spots on his pancreas, but not they everything needs to be watched, but nothing is imminent. And okay, we'll handle that. We'll take that. But that hurry up and waiting thing, that waiting thing for like hearing if your life is going to go from one to the other. If you've never experienced that, consider yourself lucky because I have and it's awful and I've experienced it. We went through this with John's uncle a few years ago and your whole life changes when someone that you love gets cancer. Your whole entire life changes. Nothing is the same. You'll never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Your family will never be the same. It can end up amazing and it can be great and you can grow and, it, and people heal all the time and I truly believe there's miracles and I believe in the strength of humans and how we can overcome things and I believe that we can fight diseases and I just I believe in our bodies and I believe our bodies and God are here to help us and save us but not everything is always good you know so it's just like when you hear cancer and you've already lived that life before with someone you love and then you've lost them like when you hear that and I heard that in regards to my father I thought I was going to just I, I wanted to like unzip myself and like crawl out of my body like I was just unhinged. It was horrible. I'm so thankful for all of the prayers and all of the love. Um, I've had a few people be like, you've talked about God a lot more recently, like in the last, you know, few months. And ever since I've, I'm a Christian, I'm, I've always been a Christian. I was raised a Christian. My mom reads her Bible every day. Um, I think people have a really skewed view of what that looks like and what somebody how somebody must feel about certain things if they believe in God or talk about God openly but when I tell you after losing my home and us being safe I was like I've leaned in and like I, I talked to him all the time and I'm so thankful that I've been talking to him so like lines of communication were open when I'm laying in my bed and I'm pleading please don't do this to my dad <laughs> not do this but please just don't let this be my life with him I can't take it and I know so many of you guys are going through that and have been through it but are living it it's awful as soon as I get off here I'm gonna call my therapist <laughs> I told John I was like I didn't even get to tell her what was going on it was such a crazy experience like it literally was such a whirlwind everything was fine I went to bed I just did not two mile jaunt. I've like put in eight miles this week, by the way. <laughs> I'm super proud of that. I got a new jogging stroller. Like my life was so normal and then it like totally flipped upside down and now it's like kind of back to normal and it's like such a mind fuck. <sighs> oh, and I'm just, oh, I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. I haven't cried on the internet in so long. <laughs> I was trying to keep it from being this because I don't want my dad to watch this and be sad or my mom but it was such it was so hard like my parents are down the road you guys know how close we are it's just awful it was awful but he's okay so it's fine and I just know so many of you guys are dealing with this and I hate that I also think it's bringing up grieving from like losing people I love and it's to this is just terrible I'm so thankful and it just inspires me more to keep going and just be as good as I can be. Even if you're your healthiest self, my dad's a bull. Like, he's so strong. He's healthy. Generally speaking, he's very healthy and he's active. And he's, it's just like your life can change. Even if you do all these things, you can still get awful news. It happens to babies. Like, it's just not fair. But when it like creeps in your world, even if it's for like a brief second it's terrible so oh oh yeah we're gonna have some work to do I don't feel anything I couldn't eat like I definitely could not eat these last two days it was really hard but as soon as I got the news yesterday my mom called me she's like okay his results came in the doctor the surgeon came in they're like they're very 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 confident they're benign very confident and like I just could have I just took Ev I popped him in the stroller and I took him on a couple miles around our neighborhood and listened to all of my favorite Christian music and during the walk and just like prayed and like thank you so much. Uh, I haven't really cried yet. I only cried once. So this is my second cry. And I'll be fine. 
I went to dollar store today. Do you guys want to let's like perk this thing back up? But he's he's okay. <laughs> I just feel so like I feel so deeply for I have really good friends who've lost their parents to cancer. And like, how does your life go on? My mom lost her dad and they were like me and my dad. And I used to like she would cry for years. And I always just I missed him too. He's my papa, he was my grandpa, but like losing a parent is just so horrible. And the thought of anything like that is just terrible. Life is both beautiful and awful and unfair and also amazing. So <laughs> oh, I think I said like 500 things. What did I say? It feels really good to cry. Because oh. I'm still on Paxful, so I don't just naturally cry, but this is feels good to get it out. I just, I like I said, I can't even get it out. Like, I just feel so bad for you. You all who are experiencing this, when I tell you, I pray. I pray every single night for all the people who are living this. It's terrible. So, if you want to do anything else on this video, just leave your name and, like, just, just lift each other up in the comments, you know? Like, pray for someone. Even, I know it's, like, you don't have to be, like, I'm not, I'm not shoving God down your throat or anything. I'm just saying, like, it does not hurt to just open up a line of communication to whatever you believe in upstairs and be like, hey, I just really want everybody to be okay. And I really want people to feel loved and good and healthy and happy. And that's why I'm so scared of, like, leaving my kids behind and why I want to get healthy for them. <laughs> because life, this is the circle of life, but it doesn't... It's just so scary. I hate being a grown up so much. I had to like talk to, I, it's like, oh, I had to talk to doctors and surgeons and calls and therapy. Like, I, it was like on top of my kids. Like, I have kids too. I don't know how my mom did this. I just don't get it. Like, raising your own kids and like having a life outside of like, you walk, it's just like, oh, God, that sucks so bad. And I'm so thankful it was. Good news. Oh, Jesus. This is why I say YouTube's my therapy. Because I feel so much better. You should just get a camera. Even if I never post this, I would feel better. Because I'm like, oh man, I didn't get to tell everybody how really bad that really fucking sucked. It sucks so bad. <laughs> He's home resting. He got... Oh, sorry. I got really snot, snot all over me. He's home resting. They discharged him last night. He didn't eat anything for 48 hours. So he was able to eat finally after his last MRI on his stomach. Uh, we haven't gotten the results of that yet back, but he just had a colonoscopy and it was fine. Like they were all up in there. I'm trying to see if he's Crohn's. I know nothing about Crohn's, but you know I'm gonna deep dive this. <laughs> it's been a hell of a couple days. My heart is with all of you. I love you all and he is okay. Currently, he's fine. Like he's not in any pain at all. Um, he's good we just have to like get all of that stuff looked at and like see if it needs to be removed or see if they like go in and cauter carterize say i don't know i'm not a doctor but um there's still things that have to be done but the trajectory is a little less bleak you know and he's not actively in pain or sick right now so once he passed the five pound papaya it seemed that calmed down the inflammation we're going to be heavily focusing and targeting inflammation free things um just in case it is Crohn's so that we can kind of gauge how we can make him feel better and hope that that never happens again because oh my gosh it was terrible the pain terrible I also got a Dunkin coffee this morning I never go to Dunkin and look at this straw they gave me <laughs> all right it's not that bad Are you guys okay I know there's a lot <sighs> sorry about that I just don't know how to talk about it. Like, I was like, I can't. And can you imagine me in the middle of this being like, thank you, Helix, for sponsoring today's video. Can you imagine? I was like, I cannot do that. I can't do that. So I got to put something out in the meantime so that I do not do that. I will not do that. And I will also not put cancer in the title of this video or in the thumbnail or anything because I don't want my videos to pop up when someone types in something for cancer. No, thank you. I'm not doing that. No. So, just no. It was horrible for me the last two days. But it could have been so much worse. And for that, I give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. I'm going to be praying for you guys. 
because I know my story you would wish was yours too. I would, I know there's so many of people out there who are like, I wish that was the case for my dad or my mom or my brother, my son, my child, my husband, my wife. Like, I know that. And cancer creeps in everywhere and it's terrible, man. It's the fucking worst ever. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna have to call my girl. I love you guys. In the next video you see will be a Helix video. I'm going to be filming tomorrow a full what I eat in a day and um, just being at home with the kids and getting them set up for Easter. So until I see you guys in a couple of days, thank you so much for your love. Just leave a nice, positive, uplifting comment down below for somebody, anybody we can pray for. Leave them down in the comment section too. I, every night, takes me about 30 minutes to get through my prayers. I put my yoga toes on. I close my eyes, I lay there in my bed with my yoga toes on, and I pray. And I do it every single night, and I would love to add whoever you want me to pray for into my reg regimen. I got a regimen going, so I love you all, and I hope to see you. I know I'll see you. I have to see you, because I, I have, I signed a contract. So I will see you guys in a couple days. Love you. Bye. I know, I'm sorry. It's a lot. I'm sorry.